All right, everyone, we're going live on Facebook. Says we're live. Thank you so much. Everything go good there. I'll check my key. Welcome council members, just letting you know uh, so far, it looks like the over under on tonight's meeting is 8.15 p.m. So place your bets. It's like everyone was talking is 8.15 p.m. So uh, I think Don is taking the over, uh, Molly's definitely taking the over, but I believe in all of you. So we shall see what happens. Over.
President Jenkins, all council members are online. Hi, Angie. Hello, how are you? Welcome Good to our meeting this evening. Glad to see you. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Sure. Good evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order. Today is October 12, 2020, Reynoldsburg City Council meeting. The time is now 6.31. I'm Council President Angie Jenkins. This meeting is being held through electronic conferencing and live stream on the city's Facebook page. Council is still meeting virtually as the necessary equipment that is needed to live stream our meetings just arrived recently and is in the process of being installed. Council anticipates that the October 26, 2020 meeting will be back in person in council chambers. Molly, would you please call the roll? Council Member Silvati. Here. Council Member Lawson Rowe. Here. Council Member Here. Kottner. Here. Council Member Bryant. Here. Council Member Baker. Here. Council Member Strickland. Here. Council Member Pecoro. Here. And President Jenkins. Here. Next, we'll have the approval of minutes. There is a change in the agenda this evening. Item 10A on the consent agenda for emergency approval will need to be removed from the consent agenda as an amendment needs to be made. If there are no other changes to the agenda, it will stand as amended. Item four is approval of minutes. Approval of the City Council regular meeting minutes of September 28th, 2020. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved as submitted. Item five, we have community comments. Molly, did you receive any comments from the community? Yes, we have several here this evening, and we're going to um, start with Mr. Simpson. Uh, he's the vice president of the FOP. Can you unmute? Can you hear there me now? Go. Yes. Yeah. 
Actually, uh, this is Keith Carroll. I'm the president of Capital City Lodge Number 9. Jeff was not available tonight, and I certainly wanted to reach out to your leadership. Um, I just wanted to comment. I believe uh, tonight you're passing or having the final reading for your Citizen Review Board language that we've worked with. Is that correct? Is that what you want to make? So I'm sure. Yeah. Attorney Shook. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to commend you all and, and appreciate the leadership you have shown uh, as setting an example for all cities within Franklin County uh, to work with FOP9. Uh, I know uh, someone reached out to us. Uh, we had some very good dialogue and, and shared concerns on both sides uh, from elected officials, the public, uh, the officers that serve the city. And I, I think with working together and having that good dialogue, we were able to come up with something. Um, and I simply wanted to applaud you for your leadership and your effort in that process, saving the taxpayers thousands of dollars by simply working with uh, the officers in your community and the Fraternal Order Police uh, to facilitate this. Um, and hopefully we can all move forward together. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming in this evening. And what did you say your name is? My name is Keith Farrell, and I'm the president of Capital City Lodge Number 9, the Fraternal Order Police. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, Madam President, we have um, Herman Wright here in Council Chambers who would like to make a comment about the Civilian Re Review Board also. Once again, um, I'm Herman Wright. Uh, I reside on Glacier Avenue here in Reynoldsburg. I think you've obviously you've heard from me before. I've been a citizen of uh, a resident since about 19 years now. <clears throat> and since I've uh, previously uh, stated my opposition to the proposed Civilian Police Review Board, I won't go into that detail again tonight. Uh, I will only say that again, I believe that the proposal is a solution in search of a problem. Our police department is not racist. It does not consist of, it does not have a consistent or sustained history of race, racist behavior. Um, I noticed after my previous comments, uh, someone went back did some research on the history of uh, our police department. And one incident uh, was noted that goes back 27 years. Uh, I submit to you that uh, 20, 27 years is, is an awful long time. So I don't believe that whatever problem existed then exists today. At least in my 19 years of being here, uh, I haven't seen that to be the case. Um, it has been indicated by some on council that some of the citizens of Reynoldsburg are concerned about possible negative interactions with the police. And as you know, I, I've been here twice. I've stated my opposition previously. So what I would like to do is discuss on the other hand, something that might be a benefit to the residents of Reynoldsburg because someone said that uh, in, in some prior comments that there were citizens here in Reynoldsburg who had some deep concerns or reservations about their possible interactions with the police. And uh, what I suggest is that perhaps, and I, and I congratulate council on the fact that you guys are pretty experienced, you're all bright people. So I think that you guys can do a lot in a positive way to work in partnership with the police, re, uh, police department. Uh, I'd like to recommend that poss possibly that council work with the police department uh, to put together some type of uh, education for the residents of Reynoldsburg, uh, education in the schools. Um, we have kids today, it's been said, who fear interaction with the police. Now, I wonder why that is, possibly because of perceived notions possibly because they've never been educated by their parents on what to do in the event of an encounter with the police. So they haven't been told or their misconceptions or their concerns haven't been addressed either uh, by council, by our police department, by our schools, by their parents or whatever. So I think council could 
devote some time to working with the police department and set up, setting up some type of education within the schools so that the members of the police department could go into some of these classrooms. And I believe we have some police resource officers, but beyond that, some of these police officers could be in the schools and have a discussion with these kids, not a lecture, but to find out from these kids what it is they think or perceive when they have an encounter with the police. What is, what is it they fear? And what should they do in the event of an encounter? I can tell you personally that I witnessed, oh, in the last several months, uh, a family member and an encounter with the police. Um, I did everything I could to encourage him as to the right way to handle the encounter. Now, it didn't involve him directly. It involved someone else, but we happened to be present. And I had to talk to him and say, look, Whatever the issue is, if you were involved in this encounter, right now is not the time for attitude. Not, not now is the time beside the road here to engage in negative conversation or comments with a police officer. It is better to deal with the situation. Yes, officer, no officer. How should I proceed, officer? If there is a problem, then deal with it later. But you don't deal with it at the side of the road you don't give attitude, you don't do those things. So that, that was my personal uh, witness to this, to this situation. Uh, as to, yes, okay. Um, as to adults here in the, in the city, perhaps uh, council could disseminate some educational material for them uh, to find out what their perceptions are and to see how we can address these things and perhaps council could have a meeting directed by both council and the police department with, with residents of the city to work on ways that we could all better interact with each other. I wanna congratulate all of you for your, your patience. I wanna congratulate you on your talent. I'd like to congratulate the new chief and the assistant chief. And I hope that we can work with our police, police department in a positive way. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, now, um, Director Bauman would like to address council regarding trunk or treat. Okay, thank you. Thank you, council president, members of council. I'm going to speak to you today on behalf of the Reynoldsburg Community Association. Uh, they have a few events planned for Halloween. The traditional Halloween party that they've put on for many years um, cannot take place, obviously, because of COVID. So they have some uh, new ideas. So um, this Saturday, October 18th, will be pie pumpkin pickup. So it's a smaller size pumpkin for the children who are eight and under who uh, can come by to come by the Kroger at uh, Maine and Taylor, pick up a pumpkin and decorate it. And then there'll be some virtual contests. And that will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. to get specifics as to where to park and the traffic flow. If you go to the Reynoldsburg Community Association's Facebook page, you can get all of that there. And then on October 24th, there will be a trunk or treat out at Civic Park from three o'clock until six or whenever candy runs out, whichever comes first. And they have 12 business sponsors that will be there that will have their trunks decorated and they will drive through um, at Civic and the kids will receive their candy. Everyone is encouraged to come in co costume and um, face masks are required of those who are participating as the decorated trunks and those people driving through as well. Um, so that is from three to six at Civic um, on October 24th. And then beginning on October 18th until October 25th, they will have various virtual contests. So if you go to the RCA uh, Facebook page, you'll receive all of that information there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Madam President, uh, Chief Baker would like to introduce our new Assistant Chief. Good evening, President, members of council. Uh, I'm excited today to announce uh, the hiring of Rhonda Grizel. She has over 25 years of experience uh, with the Columbus Division of Police, and she really hit on all the areas that we were looking for in a candidate. Um, if I said, if I said that we hit a home run with this uh, hire, that would be an understatement. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we, we really hit a grand slam. So I wanna take this opportunity uh, to allow you to meet uh, Rhonda, and to ask any questions that you may have. So I'll step to the side. 
Good evening, members of council. Um, I am blessed to be here and so excited to be joining uh, Mayor Begany and Chief Baker and all of you in serving the citizens of Reynoldsburg. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you for being here. We uh, welcome you to Reynoldsburg. We are happy and excited to have you here. All right, thank welcome. you all very much. I'd like to just say welcome to, uh, welcome to Reynoldsburg, welcome to the police force, and um, hope to, to talk to you in person uh, soon so we can get familiar with each other. Absolutely, absolutely, sounds great, thank you. Thank you. Also, okay. um, Council Pre President, I just wanna quickly say before he leaves uh, that to the FOB, uh, FOP president, thank you for coming on and giving your support to the Civilian Review Board. And uh, we all look forward to this um, review board so we could work together in collaboration. And so I just wanna say thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, we have two comments that I will read into the record from local residents. Uh, the first one is from Tamara Watkins at 70, 7833 Priestley Drive. Both of these comments, by the way, are about uh, an increased cost in water bills. And both comments have been forwarded last week to the water department and uh, the utility director, and they have been in touch with both of these residents. Um, uh, Tamara Watkins, I would like my concerns to be presented at the city council meeting on Monday, October 12th regarding my water bill tripling. I've had a plumber come in and check and I don't have any leaks, so I'm trying to understand why the substantial increase. The other comment is from Cindy Parker at 1968 Haverton Drive. I will apologize to start because this may be a longer email than most. With that being said, what is happening with our water bills? They have become outrageous. I am on the app next door and my neighbors are all complaining. Here's my example. I bought this house in 2017. My son and his wife lived with me at the time. That's three adults, no children. I was asked when I first called to set up my service about the number of people moving in the house. I inquired as to why that was an issue if we were billed actual usage. I was concerned about being prorated as I try to be a little more conservative when it comes to using utilities. She assured me it didn't work that way. So for the next two and a half years, my bill for three of us averaged somewhere around $278. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but expectations were in that area. I figured roughly $33 per person per month. That was pretty accurate. Now it's only one person. I do have a pool and that may have accounted for the little spikes in the summer, but I avoid using the hose to fill the pool. I expect to pay more when I do. Last May, my son and his wife moved to their own place, so naturally I assume, silly me, that my bill would show a significant decrease since there were less showers, toilets, flushing, teeth brushing, loads of laundry, etc. Just the dishwasher alone was run every night or every other night when there there were dishes. Now, <clears throat> now it is run maybe three or four times a month. That's two thirds of the users gone. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have always watered my flowers, never the whole lawn, which even if I really watered this year, I felt it would be offset by less people using water here. Yet when I received my bill in September, I nearly had a heart attack. It was higher than ever. At $330 for one person, what's going on? When I called the water department, they were condescending and rude. They never really addressed my question as to what was going on. I've been told by my neighbors that they were told they might have a leak, all of us at the same time. I was told by another neighbor that they were told it was old meters that were at fault. Then come, then come re replace it. Again, all of us at the same time. Something needs to be done and soon. People are really upset. Go on next door and look at all of the comments. Um, when I moved here, many people turned up their noses and said, uh, Reynoldsburg, but I love it here. But this exorbitant, outrageous type of bill is the very thing that pushes people out. 
Property taxes go up and up as well. I am one person living in my home and I feel this water bill is beyond ridiculous. What is happening? Replace my old meter if this really is an issue. Hopefully I am not prorated at three people as I told your department. It is only me now and as you might guess, I'm a little hawked off. Thank you in advance for taking the time to read this. And Madam President, that is all the comments for this evening. Thank from you. Residents. Do we have any comments from council this evening? Mayor Begany, do you have any comments this evening? I do have a few, but I believe I saw uh, Councilman Baker raise his hand first. I just wanted to make sure that I recognize that. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I was trying to find the unmute button. Um, <laughs> just real quick, just a quick reminder to uh, for those who like to nominate somebody for the first annual Mel Clemens Community Service Award, the forms are now on the city's website. And if there's somebody you believe that's gone above and beyond um, servicing the community, please nominate them and we will recognize them in December. They will get a nice plaque from the city and their name will be edged in stone, well, kind of in stone on the plaque uh, hanging in the lobby of City Hall. So I'll, that's all I have. And what's the deadline for that submission? Uh, I believe it's, Donna, do you remember what the deadline is? I believe it's in November. October 29th. October, okay. Okay, October 29th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other comments from anyone on council? Thank you, Mayor Begany. Yes, I just have a few uh, brief comments. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to let you know that uh, in reference to uh, Herman Wright's comments about getting involved with the schools, um, believe it or not, uh, earlier this summer, uh, the chief and I sat down with the superintendent and did discuss exactly that, uh, getting our officers in the school where it would be more of a conversational piece. Uh, we also hope uh, that eventually we can reinstitute uh, a version of the illumination project that had been uh, able to address some of the concerns of the citizens uh, and how they relate with the police force. Uh, unfortunately, COVID has kind of delayed a number of those initiatives. Um, and I believe with Reynoldsburg students returning to school next week, uh, we should give them a little bit of time to get used to that world before we uh, kind of get involved uh, from the police side on that one. Um, in addition, uh, the water bills are uh, of great concern to us here at City Hall. We've been dealing with a number of issues over the last couple of days. Uh, so as we kind of move forward, my first piece of advice to any resident that has a concern about their water bill uh, is to please make sure you contact the water department. Uh, we are more than happy to try and make arrangements and explain why we are having the issues that we are having or why they are, why their bills are the way they are. But believe it or not, it is almost as simple as, you know, one flush of the toilet, one extra run of the dishwasher, things of that nature that is there. Uh, but we are willing to work with the residents to help explain the circumstances. And if there are issues with meters, those things can be addressed as well. I'm sure for people who have questions, they can uh, contact again, the water department or uh, director uh, William Dorman. Um, I do have one proclamation that I will read. Uh, the other two I do have, but uh, council will take the lead on this one. Um, I am a big believer in uh, prevention of bullying and believe it or not, October is uh, you know, National Bullying Prevention Month. So I'm going to go ahead and read my proclamation. Uh, whereas bullying is physical, verbal, sexual, or emotional harm or intimidation intentionally directed at a person or group of people, and whereas bullying occurs in neighborhoods, playgrounds, schools, and through technology such as the internet and cell phones, and whereas thousands of Ohio children and adolescents are affected by bullying annually, whereas targets of bullying are more likely to acquire physical, emotional, and learning problems, and students who are repeatedly bullied often fear such activities as riding the bus, going to school, and attending community activities, and whereas children who are bullied are at greater risk of engaging in more serious, violent behaviors, and whereas children who witness bullying often feel less secure, more fearful, and intimidated, now, therefore, I, Joe Begany, mayor of the city of Reynoldsburg, Ohio, proclaim October 2020 as National Bullying Prevention Month. Be it resolved that Reynoldsburg City Schools, students, parents, recreation programs, religious institutions, and community organizations be encouraged to engage in a variety of awareness and prevention activities designed to make our community, uh, community safer for all children and uh, adolescents. And I would also like to include and adults. Um, bullying, unfortunately, does not just stop uh, once you uh, exit uh, the educational world. 
with that, uh, I do thank you for your comments. If you have any other questions, as always, my door is open. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to item six. We have a presentation this evening, and we would like to welcome Les Samaji, who is the director of the Reynoldsburg Visitors Bureau. Director Samaji will be giving the annual report regarding the state of the hospitality industry in the city of Reynoldsburg. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Bagany, uh, President uh, Jenkins and uh, City Council. Thank you for so much for the opportunity to uh, address you. Uh, this is uh, my pleasure. Um, and what I'd like to start with is to remind you uh, what, what, I, what I said uh, at your presentation uh, about approximately a year ago. Uh, a year ago, I came, to be, came before you and I said that there were $219 million industry in tourism in, in Ohio compared to uh, about $178 million 10 years before that. Visitors spent $44 million in Ohio, $10 billion, $10, 10 billion more than 10 years before that, and $111 million per day, no, $111 per day uh, for trips and overnight trips. Um, I was, I was really happy to say that. And I was really happy to report that. Unfortunately, a year has gone by and um, we fast forward to uh, August 2, 2020 and the picture is not so rosy and as you might expect. Our travel and hospitality industry is one of the most affected industries in this COVID crisis. Experience Columbus has lost millions of dollars um, in bet tax revenue, and the impact was felt throughout their participation in promotion of, of local activities, as well as uh, in their workplace. The money lost to Ohio, Columbus, and the surrounding visitors bureaus has been tremendous. Some of the areas affected more severely than others. Uh, when you see these travel industry surveys, you can see why, and, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, quote some of them. 73% of the travelers planning to travel in the next six months will change their travel plans due to COVID. 42% canceled trips altogether 47% reduced travel plans and 27% changed the destination where they could drive instead of fly. And 16% changed international travel plans to domestic. And of course, the biggest reason, uh, biggest reason impacting travel plans has been obviously the COVID. Other reasons included concerns about the economy and transportation costs. And the majority of the people surveyed said that they are hesitant to travel because travel restrictions and health issues, protocols are unclear to them. They're, they're just not sure what to believe. And the, uh, answer, the uh, question is, like what, like, I don't know what, like you, know, you don't know who to believe and like, you don't know what's going on. Um, a huge portion surveyed said that they did not feel safe, safe traveling outside of their communities. The, the biggest problem was that nobody, know, nobody knows what's going on. Like nobody has a clear answer of what's going on and that it's affecting the travel or the hospitality industry. So here at Experience uh, Reynoldsburg, we started the year very enthusiastically. We had a, a major uh, budget 
we had a major, we had some great plans. And of course, by the middle of March, all those plans fell apart. Uh, we are able to carry out a couple of the projects. Uh, one of our partnerships, a uh, couple of the projects, one of our partnerships with Reynoldsburg Helping Hands was very successful. Uh, we did that in April. Um, we, um, we, we try to uh, improvise uh, on our activities and we partnering with local local groups. And that was uh, that was the greatest thing that we could ever do, knowing that nothing else was going on, and uh, that was very successful. Uh, the um, the other one was the uh, magazine that we published in in the spring, which was again uh, financially successful, and editorially was very successful. Um, we hit we hit some good points. We we touched on some great things and um, and we sold we sold some ads and you know that's really what made us made us successful. We are currently planning the fall issue of of the magazine, which will focus on small business, how small business is uh, uh, coping with uh, COVID. And um, as far as the magazine is concerned, it's sold out. Like right now, we have no, no more, ish, no more uh, place for uh, advertising. We're, we're all done. And, and we are just about completing the editorial portion of the, uh, the magazine. Um, we are also keeping an eye on opportunities with, to, to partner with, with, with many other organizations. Um, at least for now, uh, right now, we don't have anything really planning, any activities planning, um, including city and, and us and, and any, anybody else, everybody's just like sort of staying um, uh, online. Um, so at, at, at for now, we're just kind of holding back. The office is currently undergoing uh, a routine biannual state audit, um, and it should be completed in the coming weeks. Um, just, just to give you a, um, a reference of, of how bad the hospitality industry is right now, uh, the um, um, Cleveland, the Cleveland Visitors Bureau has uh, furloughed 30 people, about 50% of their staff. Uh, Ren uh, Columbus furloughed uh, about 37% of their staff. About 21 members lost their jobs, or for at least for now. The uh, Downtown Columbus Welcome Center for, for um, Experience Columbus has closed. Uh, Easton, Easton is still open, but the downtown, which was the major, the, the biggest um, office, uh, has closed. They lost six million dollars in uh, in revenue, and 1.5 million deficit, 1.1.5 million dollar deficit. So they are working out of their reserves, as are we. It in Reynoldsburg, we are pretty much working out of our reserves, even though, although uh, Columbus, the city has lost a lot of convention business, suburbs have done fairly well. Not, I, I, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying fairly well, but, but much, much better than, than the city, which means that we have gotten some of our bet backs uh, we are still, uh, this is now October. Normally we're done with our bet tax, bet tax revenue by July. It's now October and we still haven't reached our uh, total. Our total is $75,000 and we still haven't reached it, which just means that the bet tax is not coming in. Uh, well, 
Yeah, it's not coming in, but it's better in the suburbs than, than in the city because they don't have any conventions. The conventions have dried up. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that we are, we are doing well. Uh, we're not promoting anything because nothing is going on, but we are partnering with a lot of local community, local community organizations so that we can, we can stay relevant and we can be, you know, we can be somewhat of a, a force in, in using these dollars and, and letting them work for, for, for the community. Um, most of the, most of the uh, area um, visitors bureaus are trying, trying the same thing. They're trying to get really involved with local communities and local organizations. And they're trying to pivot and adapt to uh, uh, what, what's going on locally because nothing else is going on. And, you know, we're just waiting until this thing is over before we can start doing the same things that we've been, done, we've been doing for 30, 32 years uh, of promoting tourism, promoting, uh, promoting uh, um, uh, being, being a cheerleader for Reynoldsburg, which we still are, uh, but it's just in a little different way. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to tell you uh, that, that we are financially doing well and um, we are very conservatively spending and very conser conservatively uh, planning for the, for the future. And we're keeping an eye on what's going on. And we will be reporting to you in, in another year or, or sooner if you want. Uh, on, on what we're doing. So hey, if you have any questions, uh, please, please let me know. Thank you. I just have one question. Since the Helping Hands project that you had was so successful, do you have any plans to do that again? Uh, probably next in the spring, yes. We will, okay. we will come back in the spring and we will do that again. We are now being uh, partnering with uh, the Mid Ohio Food Bank, oh. um, as as well, uh, the Mid Ohio Food Bank and the uh, Reynoldsburg Education Association, uh, we are partnering with with all both of those uh, organizations to help them raise money for 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 food and for for the education association. Um, that's 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 going on like right now, like in the next week or two. Uh, okay. But in the spring, we will be back again, uh, helping Reynoldsburg Helping Hands. Um, that was uh, a very satisfying project, a very good project, and it's a very good for Reynoldsburg, and it's a very smart way of spending money. Yes. Do we have any um, comments or questions from council? Well, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Samaji, for coming in and giving us that report. It was um, very educational to learn more about the Re Reynoldsburg Visitors Bureau. And I know that you know everyone is suffering because of COVID and things are much different. I just uh, learned today that the Polaris Mall is extending their hours. So things are opening up a little bit more. It's just that things that have to do with the arts and things that as far as bringing in tourism into Reynoldsburg um, and Columbus, things are just quite different right now. So hopefully after next, the beginning of 2021, that things will be different, we hope. Um, I can assure you, uh, uh, Mr. Jenkins, that I'm keeping an eye on this whole thing. Um, I, uh, month on a monthly basis, I'm in touch with uh, Experience Columbus, which is the major, uh, the major organization that we belong to and we, we cooperate with and um, to see what's going on there and what's going on in the suburbs. 
and and whatever happens, you know, we, we will be on top of it. Uh, we're going to try to make the best decisions we can, and and hopefully that we can resume our normal normal activities within within the next ten to twelve months. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other questions, we will move on to item number seven, which we is communications, but we don't have any other communications this evening. So we'll move on to item eight, which is motions. We have a motion to approve a resolution recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm going to ask Council Member Lawson Rowe to introduce Ms. Juanita Dean, and she will also be reading the legislation this evening. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be re reading the resolution, but before I do that, I'd like to introduce to some um, that don't already know um, our community positive contributor, um, Mrs. Juanita Dean. I met her several years ago when our boys were, were young. Mrs. Dean works with the food service team, so she actually serves lunches to um, to, to many of our kids if they're at the summit campus. So without further ado, I'd like to um, ask Mrs. Dean if she would unmute and uh, please share her survivor story. Thank you. Madam President of Council, Clerk of co Council, members of Council and Mayor Begney, good evening. I'm thankful for this opportunity to speak with you today in the month in which we commemorate breast cancer awareness. I would like to thank my good friends, Councilwoman Meredith Rowe, for inviting me to speak this evening. We watch our sons grow up in the Reynoldsburg School District, taking classes together and playing sports together. And we are proud that they are now fine college students. <laughs> I recognize my neighbor, uh, Councilwoman uh, Miss Angie Jenkins, our president, and Miss uh, Strickland. Her son also was uh, playing football with my son. So we all go way back. But my name is Juanita Dean, and I am a breast cancer survivor as of July 20, 2019. My family has a history of breast cancer. My grandmother passed away at the age of 54 with breast cancer. I would like to share with you my experience with breast cancer, how I discovered it and what I went through. First, I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his grace and mercy that brought me through quite an ordeal. Second, I'm thankful for the support, love, kindness and care extended to me from many friends, family, including my church family and the medical staff that so diligently worked with me throughout my procedure, surgery and various treatments. On my daughter's birthday, November 29, 2018, I saw an unusual lump on the upper part of my left breast. I thought it was like a large mosquito bite. But when I looked at it, it was under my skin. I asked my husband to look at it and he said, and he was immediately concerned. He took me to the emergency room. The doctor examined the lump and said that they did not have the equipment needed for further testing. So they advised me that I make an acute visit with my OBGYN. At my visit, my OBGYN advised that we would make, that she would make me an appointment with a breast cancer doctor because she didn't like what she saw. She also sent me for a biopsy. After the biopsy, I visited my breast cancer doctor, Dr. Slam, who reviewed whose review of the pathologist report confirmed that I had breast cancer. 
Fortunately, Dr. Slim told me that I had caught it very early and it was a stage zero cancer. But they needed more tests to see how severe the cancer was and if it was aggressive. The day after Christmas, I went in for my lumpectomy. They removed the mass and took out three lymph nodes. Thankfully, the lymph nodes did not show any signs that the cancer had metastasized or spread. So it was confirmed to that cancer, that area of my breast. They sent the cells off to a genetic lab in California that conducted what they call an onco test. This test checked 21 different genes to see how aggressive the cancer was and the actual size of it. The test results came back and my cancer was upgraded to a stage two cancer. It was about 2.3 centimeters, almost as wide as an inch wide. But also the onco test revealed that this was an aggressive cancer, grade three. Another part of the test looked for, another part of the test looked for how aggressive the cancer was and its future behavior. Anything below 25 meant that I did not need chemotherapy, just radiation treatment. A score of 31 and higher meant that my chances of survival without chemotherapy were not good and the cancer could return in other parts of my body. My score was a 67. I underwent four treatments of chemotherapy at the Zangmeister Center, one treatment every three weeks. The chemo treatment itself was, wasn't bad but after each session, I was extremely tired and nothing tastes good. My family encouraged me to eat and take in nutrients to keep my strength up. Every day, my husband would check my temperature and try to feed me and keep me hydrated. I spent most of my days in bed or setting up in a recliner. My family kept our house very sterile and germ free. One of the worst part of my chemo was losing my hair. My fingernails and my toenails turned dark as the chemo made its way through my body, killing both good and bad cells. The, the best day for me was the day I had my last chemo session. In the, cancer, in the cancer center, they had a bell that you can ring when you completed your session. It's like graduation day. I was so happy when I got to ring that bell. My husband and son were right there to watch me. After my chemo session, I had to have 20 radiation treatments every day except weekends. My second happy day was when my radiation treatment was completed and I got to ring the bell again. <laughs> the blood test revealed that I was an official cancer survivor. I still have to take a cancer pill for five years and get my blood work checked and my hair is starting to come back, but I thank God for being with me and comforting me throughout my treatment. I could not have made it without the Lord, and I was encouraged and hopeful from the start. I never shed a tear upon discovering and during my treatments. I encourage every woman and young lady to start early making sure that they get regular mammograms and pap smears. It was by chance that I found my lump. I hope and pray that if life takes you down the path that I had to go through, 
that you find yourself yours early as well. I'm a living testimony and I love to share my story to anyone with the hopes that it will be an encouragement to someone who may have cancer. I have new life, new hope, new faith, and new hair. I thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. May God bless you all. I'm a survivor. Thank you. Thank you for coming and speaking and telling your story. I didn't know the whole story, but I thank you for uh, sharing your story. Um, self exams actually work yes. in that case. And so that's, that was amazing that you were able to discover it yourself without waiting for the examination. Right. Um, we'll have council member Lawson Rowe read the legislation, please. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Council President, can I say one thing before uh, yeah. Councilwoman Lawson will read the resolution because I want to get this off my chest. Um, her story touched me um, very deeply because my mom passed away from breast cancer and they only gave her a few months, but God willing, she lived uh, two years before she passed to the age of 50, which is very young. And so I'm over here getting misty eyed because I know what you went through. I've seen it. My mom using losing her hair and you know her nails and losing her appetite. So I just want to commend you for not giving up. My mom never gave up. She went out fighting. I always said that uh, she didn't give up on time. Time just ran out. And so I just want to say. I commend you and all the women who are survivors uh, from coming from a male, please get checked out. Whether it's uh, pap smear, or, um, your breasts, get checked out. And men too, men too. So I just wanna say that before the resolution was read. Thank you. Bless you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dean, for sharing your survivor warrior story. And we just appreciate your courageous spirit and, and your willingness to share. Um, I'd like to offer um, a resolution in re recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and whereas for women in the United States, breast cancer death rates are, are higher than those of, for any other cancers besides lung cancer. And whereas breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among American women besides skin cancer. And whereas about one in eight United States women, about 12.4% will develop breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. In 2020, an estimated 276,480 cases breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in and with October 10, 2000. Um, ooh, my I'm sorry. Man isn't to have her breast and whereas breast cancer in men is rare, in 2020, an estimated 2,620 new cases of breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in men. And whereas death rates from breast cancer have been declining, and these changes are thought to be the results of treatment advances, early detection through screening, and increased awareness. And whereas mammography and x-ray of the breast can detect breast cancer up to two years before physical symptoms can be seen or felt. And whereas all women and some men are at risk for breast cancer, and we encourage the citizens of Reynoldsburg to increase the rate of screenings. 
be it resolved by the Council of the City of Reynoldsburg, this council does hereby recognize and declare the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Reynoldsburg. Thank you. Are there any questions or other comments from council? Madam President, I would like to say a couple of words um, to Ms. Dean. Um, I know them personally. Um, she was a fighter, is a fighter. Uh, when she was going through this entire process. She was at the football game. She was at the basketball games, cheering just not her child on, but every child that played. And I just wanna thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, you know, our, my husband and I prayed for you. Our kids are friends. And, um, you know, you are a survivor and I just appreciate you just keeping on you know, keeping on that fight, not giving up. And this woman, I tell you, she, every time I saw her, she had a smile on her face. And she, you know, it was only but the Lord that helped you through that. And also your husband, who was your strength, you know, and also your child, your other, your daughter who was there um, helping on. It was a family effort. And again, I, I saw you when you were going through this uh, entire process. And I just thank God that you are still here fighting on and encouraging others to continue that fight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I can also add to that, she is my neighbor. And we have been together on the football sidelines, baseball sidelines, cheering our children on. We have been speed demons on the highway getting to church. <laughs> I'm gonna tell all your secrets. That's okay. <laughs> you didn't hear but that. We were, but we were going to church. So yeah. anyway, um, in not the same church, but speeding on the highway, trying to get there on time. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but we've been together for quite a number of years and yeah. I have seen you go through this process and I want to thank you for putting up with Evan and the lunchroom line because right. we know that Evan can be something else. So I want to say that I, <laughs> that I appreciate you and we have had a, such a fun time, you know, enjoying our children and in yeah. sports. So um, I'm very happy that you are a survivor. Thank and you. yes, you have been very blessed. So I appreciate it. And also may I add, uh, say something about uh, Mr. Cotner. His wife was my son's teacher and we love her. So please tell her I said, hello, okay, Mr. Cotner. I would be happy to do that. And uh, yeah, we, we kind of love her too. So she's been listening and hears <laughs> and uh, wishes you her best also. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Council Member Baker. Is there a second, please? I second. Council Member Pecorell, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries seven to zero. Next, we'll move on to item B, a motion to approve a resolution recognizing Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Council Member Bryant. Thank you, President Jenkins. Resolution in recognition of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas in just one day in the United States and its territories, nearly 75,000 victims of domestic violence sought services from domestic violence programs and shelters. That same day, more than 9,000 requests for services, including emergency shelter, housing, transportation, child care and legal representation could not be provided because programs lacked the resources to meet the needs of the victims. Whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole here in this community and throughout the United States. And whereas racism, homophobia, transphobia, ageism and discrimination based on physical ability, nationality, or other factors help perpetuate domestic violence 
and make finding safety even more difficult for some victims. And whereas the need for safe houses continues to be rated as survivors most urgent need. And whereas the city of Reynoldsburg joins with others across Ohio and the nation in supporting victims of domestic violence, as well as local programs, state coalitions, national organizations and other agencies nationwide who are committed to increasing public awareness of domestic violence and sending a clear message to abusers that domestic violence is not tolerated in the city of Reynoldsburg. And whereas domestic violence impacts millions of people each year, but it can be prevented. Preventing domestic violence requires the collective voice and power of individuals, families, institutions, and systems. It adds a valuable and powerful component to transforming our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Reynoldsburg that we recognize the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and encourage the community to support and uh, to, to supporting and finding assistance for anyone experiencing domestic violence. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from council? May I have a motion for approval? I'll motion. Council member Baker is second. Second. Council member Meredith Lawson Rowe, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries seven to zero. Next, we'll move on to our reports this evening. We have a liquor permit. permit. Chief Baker, please. This application is for a liquor permit transfer from NBT Investment Group, LLC to QUIC 7596 LLC. The owner of QUIC 7596 LLC is Shorazad Mobarak. The permit holder is doing business as Quick and Cold Drive Through, located at 7596 East Main Street. He does not hold any other liquor permits at this time. There have been three police related calls at the location from 2010 to 2020. The most serious call for service at this location was on March 26, 2020. This call was an assault. The old permit holder was cited uh, just this year on July 12, 2020 for furnishing alcohol to a person under 21 years of age. The Ohio Department of Liquor Control advised us that this violation will need to be cleared up prior to the transfer of the license. The business is not situated in an area that would have an adverse effect on the operation of any hospitals, schools, or playgrounds. I recommend that we do not appeal this transfer. Thank you. Next, we'll have item B, the auditor's report. I'm sorry, Madam President. <clears throat> Chief, so our choices are to request a hearing. I do not re uh, believe we need to request a hearing. Okay, thank you. Madam President, the auditor's office submitted the budget by department and classification for the months of July and August, 2020. Thank you. Item C under reports, Development Parks and Recreation Committee, Council Member Baker. Um, I, oh, I am unmuted, okay. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, this is the Development Park and Recreation Committee meeting for October 12th, 2020. Members in attendance are Council Member Cotner, Council Member Packerow, Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself, and Madam President. The first uh, item on the agenda is an ordinance creating the Wagner Road Tax incre Increment Financing Incentive District, declaring improvements to partials within each incentive district to be public proposed and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the 
deposit of these services payments and specifying the public inf infrastructure improvement <clears throat> that benefits or service partials in the in incentive district. This order, this ordinance is before council, oh, sorry, is, is uh, before council for its third reading and to amend uh, attorney Shook. Is there any questions or anything on this? Uh, this is this is just for an amendment. We discussed this at the public hearing at uh, the last council meeting. Uh, there is a new section five. Uh, the purpose of this section is to make uh, proper uh, distribution of service payments to the uh, board of trustees for Truro Township associated with a renewal levy uh, they had passed after January 1st, 2006. Okay. Um, is there any question or comments from the committee regarding this item? Just any? real quick. Um, so again, this is on to our adoption this evening. And again, this is a, this is a good development tool that, that can be used. Um, taxes that would be paid and things go to county kind of come into the city to help with this infrastructure. So, you know, if people, had, it, it's pretty detailed to go through TIF projects. So um, I just think, you know, we have to make sure the community knows if they want to ask, understand, learn a little bit more. Um, sitting and listening to some of the developers talk and like Andrew in, in the development department really explaining how TIFs can be beneficial to the city and to the community. Um, it's very interesting. So just um, the benefits and the possibilities are, are, are good and, and hopefully we can see the advantage here in the community in a, in a needed area for the development. And um, Quite a few homes coming there. So just thank you. Anybody else from the committee that would like to speak? Anybody from council? Okay. Uh, seeing none, I move that we accept the amendments as proposed by Attorney Shook and the outline of council and the materials that we received. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Lawson Rowe. Um, any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, ayes have it. I I'm, um, I'm move that we forward this ordinance to council for its third reading and approval as amended. Uh, um, so the next item on the agenda is an ordinance to amend chapter 11, planning and zoning code for the city of Reynoldsburg. Uh, Attorney Shirk, would you like to speak? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna be asking uh, council not to forward this for a second read this evening. Um, we are currently in the process of uh, working through to make sure we make all the changes that we identify as, as helpful and necessary. Uh, we do have a, a small group of people uh, who are continuing to work on that and we will certainly accept suggestions, uh, not just from council, but from the public uh, for any changes that they would like to see as well. But uh, at this time, we are not asking for this to go forward for a second read at this time. Uh, we're gonna slow down the process and make sure we do it right. Okay. Would you like for us to just hold this until our next council meeting this month? Um, Would that be sufficient or just table it until you figure out what date will work? I think we would table it until the first meeting in November. November? Okay. Um, well, then, is there any other questions for Attorney Shirk regarding this? Um, Chairman, I do have um, a comment, if I may. Sure. Um, Attorney Shook, I just wanted to um, make it public that I received a, a call from a neighbor who had a concern with the color of a paint that was on an area business. And um, after contacting um, Director Dorman, I understand that the, the code that is enforced regarding paint is only specific to historic Reynoldsburg. And um, I just wanted to make that public that um, I did address this neighbor's concern. And um, if we need to discuss that during the, the um, renovation of the, the, the current code, um, I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. I appreciate that, uh, Council Member Lawson. I also wanted to make a, a note. I, I misspoke earlier. This has not even been sent to Council for a first read yet, so we are holding off on a first read until 
uh, the first meeting in November, at which time council will then need to send it to the planning commission. Okay. Is there any other comments or questions for attorney Shirk from the committee? Uh, any from council? Okay, seeing that. I'll motion that we'll go ahead and table this until the first council meeting in November. So there's a lot of time to continue to work on this. As we say before, this is a living document. We want to get it right. And so we'll just go ahead and table it until the first meeting in November. Um, the next item on the, on the agenda is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Media Promotion Enterprises MPE for the 2021 Tomato Festival. Dire uh, Director Bellman. Thank you, Chairman Baker, members of the committee. Um, as, as you stated, this ordinance is to help begin prepare for the 2021 Tomato Festival. We are gonna be very optimistic that we'll be able to have that event. And we would like to enter into agreement with MPE for media promotions, um, it will be for the, he'll be the booking agent or they will be the booking agent and for production services and where we are requesting that this contract um, not exceed $90,000 for both of those services. Okay. Um, is there any comment or question for Director Bauman on this item from the committee? Okay, anybody from council? Okay. Well, oh. Seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we forward this legislation on the council for its first reading. Is there a second? Um, Councilman Pacaro, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, is there, sorry? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, as there is no further business for the uh, development park and recreation committee i'll return this back to you madam president thank you item d there is no public safety law and courts committee meeting this evening we'll move on to e public service and transportation committee council member strickland thank you madam president this is the public service and transportation committee meeting for october the 12th 2020 members in attendance are council member cotner council member Pacriel. Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself, and President Jenkins. Item number one, an ordinance from the Reynoldsburg City Council supporting the Ohio Department of Transportation ODIS, project to refer, resurface US Route 40 and other related improvements in Franklin County. Director Dorman, would you like to talk a little bit more about this ordinance? Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, just real briefly here. So, so if you remember last year, I think uh, before I came on board, uh, Director Bowser uh, spoke about how ODOT is coming through as part of the urban paving program to do uh, Main Street. Um, the good thing was uh, you guys were forthright enough to get all the utility work done ahead of time. So what they're going to be coming through now and doing is uh, both districts are going to actually be working together. So we're going to get the entire section of Main Street repaved through our entire corporate limits, which is which is great because there's actually two different ODOT districts that uh, handle that. Um, but part of that program, it does require us to pay 10% of those costs. Um, and basically what we are doing now is just uh, agreeing to reimburse ODOT uh, for those expenses. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? Any from council? I do have one question, uh, Chair, Chair uh, Strickland. Uh, Mr. Dorman, I noticed that the parts going along Main Street that they were putting down new sidewalks, which I do applaud. Um, is there plans to continue to expand that towards the, um, the boundary line? Yes, uh, that's a good question. So, you know, we, we've talked about that. I know that we talked a, a few meetings ago about uh, beginning a sidewalk program again next year. We're going to look at some areas where we have what we kind of call the missing gaps, you know, areas uh, that where no sidewalk exists and it's really prohibiting uh, pedestrian access uh, to and from certain areas of the city. I think when we look at that corridor, uh, I don't want to speak too far ahead, but 
there is some opportunities for future development in some of those major sections where we are missing either leisure trail or sidewalk. And hopefully when those areas develop, that would be a requirement of the developer, similar to what you're going to see happen with MI Homes on Wagner Road. Um, they will build the leisure trail and the sidewalk along the frontage of their property. Um, so that helps offset the city's, you know, cost and contribution, which is great. Uh, but they will then, you know, take up some of those gaps and, Hopefully, as we move along and development occurs, you'll start to see a lot of those areas fill in, and then we'll come in behind, hopefully, and connect the dots. Thank you. I, I just want to ask that question because the other day I did see a, a gentleman walking the, the little small brim on uh, Main Street as he was leaving Kroger. So I just wanted to ask that question because it is a safety concern. Yeah, I agree. I do see quite a bit of that on my way to and from work. Uh, people even riding bikes all the way to Amazon and other places. So Yeah. Are there any other questions from council members or comments? I move we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Member Lawson Rowe. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to Council for a first reading. As there is no further business for the Public and Service Transportation Committee, I return the meeting to President Jenkins. Thank you. We'll move on to item D, which is Finance and Administration Committee. Council Member Savati. Thank you, President Jenkins. Um, <clears throat> this is the Finance and Administration Committee meeting for October 12, 2020. Uh, the members in attendance are Council Member Baker, Council Member Bryant, Council Member Strickland, uh, myself, and President Jenkins. Uh, the first item on the agenda for tonight is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for the city insurance for 2020-2021, appropriating funds, waiving competitive bidding, and declaring an emergency. Uh, this ordinance is actually being brought forward as a single read emergency uh, ordinance tonight. <clears throat> um, as all the council members hopefully will know, we about two weeks ago, we got a rather detailed uh, memo uh, explaining uh, this uh, ordinance. <clears throat> However, rather than me trying to paraphrase it, I'm going to ask Director Bowler if she could uh, uh, read into the record what this is about. Good evening, Chairman Sabati, uh, committee members, Council President Jenkins and Council members. This piece of the le legislation is just to uh, request the changing of our uh, uh, liability and automobile insurance carriers and the policy date to be effective 10-14 10, 10, of 2020. Uh, part of this is a result, the city has a obligation to carry a $10 million flood policy on the YMCA pro property as part of our package. We were originally quoted that this, uh, and it was confirmed that we had the coverage uh, beginning of 2020, and it was at an exceptionally low rate. However, it was never listed on any of our policies. After much follow-up, we were advised through our broker that Trident would not provide the coverage as promised for the flood and they would refund our money. Of course, that was not our desire uh, to have our money refunded. We wanted the coverage. Um, the second issue we're dealing with, uh, with our insurance is we've had uh, fairly large loss ratios over the last few years. And we're looking at a substantial increase in premiums, which I have been now advised in writing from Trident that we're looking at a, between a fifty and a sixty-five thousand dollar increase in premiums uh, for the coming year, if we don't take some action. Uh, we were, um, and this would still require us uh, securing a flood policy separately. So we would be up fifty to sixty-five thousand dollars, and then buying additional flood policy. Uh, with all these factors in place, our broker at Willis has worked really diligently for us to secure the same coverage uh, with Zurich, another company, uh, that will give us the $10 million flood policy for a premium of $252,707 for the year. 
they offered to have this uh, go in effect on the 14th, which would then in fact give us the 10 million coverage that we need on the flood policy. I know this is unusual and I do appreciate the one uh, read, uh, but with our loss ratio, um, we run the risk if we don't bind this coverage um, soon uh, that we could have another loss and the potential for uh, them to rescind the offer of coverage. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Thank you very much, Director Bowler. Uh, as she said, does uh, anybody on the committee have questions? Okay. Anybody uh, from council have questions for Director Bowler? Okay. Uh, then I move we forward this ordinance to council for emergency approval tonight. Um, do I have a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Councilperson Strickland. Um, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, motion Thank carries. You. All right, the ordinance will be forwarded to Council for emergency approval. So the second item on the agenda um, is an ordinance authorizing renewal of the city's dental insurance coverage uh, with Delta Dental <clears throat> for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2022 um, and waiving competitive bidding. Um, I'm told that either Otter Sisak or Attorney Shook might have comments on this. No? Okay. Oh, I can speak to that if you'd like. <laughs> Would love it. <laughs> okay. uh, so this is just our annual renewal for our dental coverage. Um, earlier in the year, we were uh, informed that we weren't going to have a rate increase um, and that uh, we would not have a rate increase uh, for 21 and 22. So I do have good news occasionally. Uh, that is a piece of it. Um, also, although this is not part of this uh, legislation, uh, we were informed this week that uh, we also, uh, because we are in an as-is renewal for the city's vision coverage, uh, we will have no rate increase on that uh, up through January 1st, 2024. So occasionally I do bring good news. Well, wow, congratulations. Uh, thought to us, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, are there any comments uh, from the committee on that? From council? All right, seeing none, I move we forward this ordinance to council for its first reading. Do I have a second? Second. Second by council person Baker. Um, any further discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, this ordinance will be forwarded to council for its first reading. Um, that concludes the business for the uh, Finance and Administration Committee and I return the meeting to President Jenkins. Thank you. Next, we'll have the consent agenda for emergency adoption. Since 10A has been removed for an amendment that is needed to be made, we will move on to item 10B, which is part of the consent agenda. This ordinance stands for emergency passage, unless someone wants to remove it for further discussion, which we have removed 10A. Would the clerk please read item 10B. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for city insurance for 2020-2021 appropriating funds, waiving competitive bid bidding and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion to approve item 10B on the consent agenda for emergency approval? I'll make the motion. Council member Baker, may I have a second please? I, I can see. Council member Pacquerel, would the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Savati? Aye. Councilmember Pecorell? Aye. Councilmember Lawson Rowe? Aye. Councilmember Cotner? Aye. Councilmember Baker? Aye. 
Council Member Bryant. Aye. And Council Member Strickland. Aye. Madam President, the vote was 7-0. Thank you. The ordinance 10B is approved with the vote seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. Would the clerk please read item 10A. An ordinance to appropriate monies from the CARES Act funds for COVID-19 pandemic related expenses of the city of Reynoldsburg and declaring oh, an emergency. No. And Madam President, there is an amendment to this. Um, unfortunately, I just realized I neglected to actually send you all a copy of the new ordinance. Um, Auditor Sisek, would you like to share the good news with Council and what the amendment will bring? Thank you. Um, this actually was written by our city attorney, Chris Shook. I gave him the information this afternoon. All right, let me unmute here. Uh, yes, we received a uh, word from the city auditor today that we have additional funding that has now been given to the city from Franklin, Licking, and the Fairfield County COVID relief funds. Um, and so the ordinance will need to be amended to reflect the amounts that we received from those counties. Let me try to make that. Give me just a minute. I have it here, Attorney okay. Shook. Yeah, the, I, was, I was trying to go back to my emails and find the numbers again. Yeah, the Franklin County amount will now increase to two million one hundred seventy thousand six hundred eighty-five dollars and thirty cents. The Licking County appropriation will increase to three hundred forty-two thousand four hundred twenty-nine dollars and sixty-four cents. And the Fairfield County appropriation will increase to $47,693.86. So council would need to amend the resolution to read uh, for those new amounts. And just to give, just to give council a little uh, a preview of an ordinance that's going to be coming before you, uh, at the next October meeting. We did receive guidance uh, from the United States Treasury Department uh, as well as the state of Ohio, uh, giving us more clarification as to how it is that we are able to spend this money. Uh, we anticipate uh, that legislation will come before you that appropriates certain amounts of this money uh, for public safety salaries and benefits. Thank you. I have a question. These amounts that we are amending, these were the total amounts that we received or, this, or is there a difference in the additional amount? Madam President, the Franklin County amount already um, included the $500,000 that was already appropriated. So I'm, uh, I think the clerk has already read that. Okay. Are there any other questions, yes, comments, or concerns? Yes, I have one more, one question. Again, this is the same amount that uh, I mean. Is this amount is again we have to spend by the end of this year, or is it different money? These the dates are actually twelve thirty. We need to have it spent by and in service or the, the goods and services done by twelve thirty. Thank you. Are there any other questions from council or the committee? May I have a motion to amend item 10A to increase the financial appropriation to Franklin County to $2,170,685.30, increase Licking County's appropriation to $342,429.64, and increase Fairfield County's appropriation to $47,693.86.
May I have a motion from council? I'll motion. Council member Baker, may I have a second? Second. Council member Strickland, would the clerk please call the roll? Council member Sovati? Aye. Council member Pecorell? Aye. Council member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council member Cotner? Aye. Council member Baker? Aye. Council member Bryant? Aye. And council member Strickland? Aye. Madam President, the vote was 7-0. Thank you. Ordinance 10A is amended with seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. And Molly, do I have to have a motion yep. to? Okay. Yes. May I have a motion to approve item 10A as amended? May I have a motion please from council? Council member Pacquerel, may I have a second? Second. Council member Bryant. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council member Silvati? Aye. Council member Pecoro? Aye. Council member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council member Cotner? Aye. Council member Baker? Aye. Council member Bryant? Aye. And council member Strickland? Aye. Madam President, the vote was 7 0. Thank you. Ordinance 10A is approved as amended. Seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. Thank you. We'll move on to item 11, consent agenda for first reading. Items 11A through D are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances stand for first reading. Would the clerk please read items 11A through D. Madam President, item A, A has been removed moved. as it did not leave committee. So we'll just have items 11B, 11B through, through D. D. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Media Promotions Enterprises, MPE, for the 2021 Tomato Festival, item C. An ordinance from the Reynoldsburg City Council supporting the Ohio Department of Transportation ODOT project to resurface US Route 40 and other related improvements in Franklin County. And item D, an ordinance authorizing renewal of the city's dental insurance coverage with Delta Dental for the period from January 1st, 2021 through December 30. 1st, 2022, and waiving competitive bidding. And these ordinances will stand for a first reading. Item 12 is a consent agenda for second reading. Items 12, A through F, are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances will stand for a second reading. Would the clerk please read items 12A through F? Item A, an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list for the Parks and Recreation Department. Item B, an ordinance to dissolve Reynoldsburg Economic Development Inc. and the former Reynoldsburg Community Improvement Corporation and transfer any remaining funds to the general fund of the city to be distributed for charitable purposes. Item C, an ordinance authorizing the city auditor to remove equipment from the city's fixed asset list for the Reynoldsburg Police Department. Item D, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to sign the project grant loan agreement with the Ohio Public Works Commission for the East Main Street roadway improvements. Item E, an ordinance assuming maintenance responsibility for the full width of Summit Road between the southernmost boundary of parcel number 010-018030-00.001 and the northernmost boundary of parcel number 010-018030-00.000 upon annexation of said parcels into the city of Reynoldsburg, agreeing to cooperate in the maintenance of said roadway and indemnifying the township of Etna in Licking County. And item F, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Com Compensation to implement coverage for individuals sentenced by the Reynoldsburg Mayor's Court to perform community su service supervised by the Criminal Justice Administrator. These ordinances will stand for a second <clears throat> reading. Item 13 is a consent agenda for third reading and approval. Items 13A through H are part of a consent agenda. All of these ordinances will stand for a third read and approval. Would the clerk please read items 13A through H. 
An ordinance creating the Wagoner Road Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Item B, an ordinance to establish chapter 163 civilian review board for the codified ordinances of the city of Reynoldsburg. Item C, an ordinance appropriating funds from the unappropriated general fund to the police department for donated monies. Item D, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to purchase radios for the police department and waive competitive bidding. Item E, an ordinance authorizing the clerk of council to certify nuisance costs 2019 for collection by the Franklin County Auditor. Item F, an ordinance authorizing the clerk of council to certify nuisance costs 2019 for collection by the Licking County Auditor. Item G, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with O. Dot for guardrail repairs on State Route 256 within the city of Reynoldsburg, and item H, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with EMHNT for engineering plans and preparation of bid documents for the 2021 Street Improvement Program and appropriating funds therefore. May I have a motion to approve items 13A through H on the consent agenda for a third reading and approval? Council President? Yes. Um, before that, I would like to uh, have item B pulled out from there, the civilian review board, to talk which, about that individually. Which one? 13B. Oh, for the civilian review board? Yes, please. So would we just approve all of them except for the B? Yes, Madam President, we would vote on um, items 13A and C through H. Okay. So may I have a motion to approve 13A and C through H, please? Motion. Council member, I believe that was Baker. May I have a second? Second. Second. Savati. Would the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Silvati? Aye. Councilmember Pecoro? Aye. Councilmember Lawson Rowe? Aye. Councilmember Cotner? Aye. Councilmember Baker? Aye. Councilmember Bryant? Aye. And Councilmember Strickland? Aye. Madam President, that was a 7 0 vote for items M. What are we? 13A A. and C through H. Thank you. Ordinance A has been approved and C through H are also approved. Seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. We'll move on to item 14, other council matters. Madam President. Yes. Madam President, we need to go back to item 13B. B. And um, council member Kotner, is there, would you like to have some dis discussion sure. on that? All right. Thank you. Um, I just I don't need to talk a lot about it. it. It's, you know, we're at the third reading on it. Um, but it, it's something that, you know, I support our police department and our leadership uh, and what they're doing so, so well. Um, several of you joined uh, today at the, at the swearing in of a new deputy chief uh, who's a female, a new African American male um, being sworn as an officer. Uh, there's a lot of positives happening in our police department uh, with our leadership and, and with our officers. And I simply just, you know, this board, council, council has an obligation and a duty to make sure our officers are acting appropriately, that our leadership within the, within the department is acting appropriately. And to, to put another civilian review board um, as an obstacle for our officers serving, is not something that I can support. So I wanted to make sure we separated that. And, um, you know, I, I, I've talked to several officers and, and I know we had the FOP on here um, and they'll accept it, you know, I, I get it, uh, but there's, you know, it, it's, they accept it because they really don't 
get a lot of a choice. Um, and, you know, and, and granted, it, it doesn't overstep bounds. It, it continues to um, keep the, the rules in place. The, the review board <clears throat> doesn't, you know, maintain powers um, that are overreaching. But I still feel like this is a, a step away from um, what we should do and what our officers should be getting from us. So I just wanted to make those comments and I appreciate you separating this item for a separate vote. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from council? Madam President. Yes, Councilwoman Strickland. Yes, I would like to say a couple of things here. Um, thank you also um, council member Cotner for your comments. Um, and I believe that with the civilian board that we or will be in place hopefully here soon. Um, this is just another step of transparency when it comes to our police officers and uh, according to our um, neighbors. Um, even though um, someone who have lived here for 19 years have never experienced racism or discrimination, um, that is perfectly fine. However, this is just one other, another step how we can bring our community together. Um, by having the FOP support and some of our um, police officers support, to me, this is just another um, step to saying we are the city of respect. I personally have um, spoke to some of our uh, business owners here in Reynoldsburg that felt as though there were discrimination based off the race um, because they are black. Let me just be transparent. I believe that our officers are doing a well, a great job here. So uh, to me, this is just saying, yes, we hear you. We hear your concerns to our neighbors. We are also listening and backing our police officers here. Um, but again, for me, it's just another level of respect. It's another level of acknowledgement that yes, things do, do happen in every department, in every city. And I, I believe the time is now to move forward with the civilian board. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Councilwoman Bryant, did you have a comment? Uh, yes, I just, uh, I wanted to say, um, you know, thank you, Councilman Kotner, for your comments. Um, but I do want to say, I, I think that there is an opportunity here rather than an obstacle. Um, I, I think that, you know, by and large, we have a, a fantastic uh, law enforcement agency here in Reynoldsburg. Um, but things do happen sometimes. And I think it's an opportunity um, to allow, you know, the resident or, or whoever is, is making any assertion, gives them an opportunity to, you know, bring that to the attention of the officer that, you know, maybe, you know, as, as, as white men and women, we don't always see things that happen. Um, there's a lot of things that can slip by us unnoticed. And, you know, I, I'd like to think of this as an opportunity as, you know, potentially a, a, a teaching opportunity uh, for some of our officers um, if, if that becomes necessary. But ultimately this is transparency um, and it allows a feeling of comfort when there's transparency. It doesn't, uh, give that, that feeling that we're trying to hide something here. And I think ultimately this will be that opportunity as opposed to an obstacle. Madam President. Yes, Councilwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Councilman Kotner, I think, raised his hand before I said anything. Okay. I, could, I either couldn't way. see him, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I mean, it, Either way, it's just fine. Um, I, again, I, um, I agree that, that I love the learning aspect. Um, I think that our officers are, are continually trained. And I, and I love that Chief Baker is you know, making a priority to continue to evolve in the department. I think that's a, a great point. Um, 
you know, I just, like I said, my, my feeling is still just specifically about this board. Each thing that, um, you know, both council members just made are fantastic points. And I, I do agree that uh, there's things that we may not see, I may not see or feel. Um, I want us to be accountable. I want us as council members to be accountable. Um, you know, um, Councilwoman Bryant, you know, just, we got an email um, just a few days ago from someone talking about um, racist concern in the fire department. And, and even though that wasn't our control, um, you know, I immediately reached out to our fire chief and um, found out that that person, you know, wasn't here in our town. I replied back to the email to that resident and, you know, there was an immediate action that, that of concern um, connected from council, connected up to even our fire department, which like I said, is a partner of ours, not in our control. So the, the concept and the idea that, um, concerns should be addressed um, and, and any kind of intimidation and racism should be um, put down and, and trained to, to navigate through as well, I am 100% in favor of. So again, I appreciate that we're having a positive dialogue about this. So thank you both very much and, and all for the comments. Um, and, I, and again, I continue to believe that we can always do better um, as, as our police officers, police force and leadership. But I, I love the path that they are taking. I love the efforts that are being made. Um, and and I, I see the growth that continues. And, you know, like when, when Councilman Salvati said a couple of weeks ago that, you know, we hope this board never does anything. You know, this is not a board that's actively meeting and engaged. It's one that's gonna respond. And as I said, I think that's where we've got to make sure we as council members are holding our leadership within the department and the force accountable. You know, we, we approve the contracts that are, that are you know, negotiated between the city and the FOP. Uh, you know, we have our city attorney come in and talk about when there's uh, allegations and lawsuits. And so, like I said, I feel that it's just more appropriate that we, we handle and work together um, as opposed to passing it to this board of a civilian review board. So uh, again, thank you though, for the, the comments and the feedback and the interaction. It's, it's, it's good, um, good dialogue. So thank you. Councilwoman Lawson Rowe, did you have comments? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I do appreciate this uh, transparent dialogue as well, uh, Councilman Kotner. Today I witnessed the swearing in of our new deputy chief and our new officer Shaw. Seeing them take to uh -oh. As I stated before, I see the city as a partner with the police and we stand shoulder to shoulder with them. I see the civilian review board as a bridge for both RPD and our community members. This review board is not in response to any situation. It is a proactive measure the city is putting in place. Reynoldsburg, as we all have know and we heard reference, is a city of respect. I see the Civilian Review Board as completing the channels of communication. I acknowledge in the past, there have been some concerns with certain officers and we are working to address those concerns. This review board will allow neighbors another communication tool if needed, again, if needed, after submitting any concerns to the police department. Thank you, Attorney Shook and team for creating this foundation. It further confirms that we are the city of respect and I fully support this le legislation. Thank you. Yes, attorney. Thank you. Thank you, council president. Uh, I just wanna make a couple of comments. As, as this council knows, uh, I rarely give any kind of personal commentary during these city council meetings. Uh, I understand my role here is to give legal advice. Um, I will say that for the last nine and a half months, I probably more than anybody here in this meeting have had the honor and privilege to work uh, with our police officers. And I have a tremendous amount of faith in their ability and in their service to our community. And there's nothing about this legislation whatsoever that is directed at them or their professionalism. Uh, this is something you know we worked very hard on. Uh, we were very careful to incorporate and involve the Fraternal Order of Police because we felt, we felt that 
that their position was important, not just because we have a collective bargaining agreement with them, uh, because they represent our officers. And we needed our officers to know that, that this was not directed at them. We have the utmost faith in their abilities, in the leadership that Chief Baker and new Chep Deputy Chief uh, are providing. Um, and again, I would reiterate, you know, Councilman Salvati's comments from the last meeting that our hope is that we will have a civilian review board that has very little to do. And I can tell you that from everything that I've seen just so far this year, I have not seen a case yet this year that I would have considered uh, to be something that would have ever gone before the civilian review board. Um, so I, I think this is this is something that we are doing to be proactive. Um, I do hope that council passes this ordinance this evening. Thank you. President Jenkins. Yes, council member Pacarau. All right, uh, thank you, President Jenkins. Uh, let me tell you what happened today. Um, we were in the we were in the shopping mall. There were two police officers standing there, and my son just jumped out of the car and was just shouting, "Officer Hines!" And the thing, only thing he knows is that Officer Hines was the one who used to come together and just give them some stickers like this uh, every time he sees, because he was he used to be in together with him all the time, like all the, all of the kids also. So I believe that. Uh, in Reynoldsburg, our police officers are doing excellent job. I just want to thank them for the service and also went through this legislation. And also we had a comment uh, in the last, maybe I had a thorough study of these things and different level. I think this will support our officers in the long run and also to our community. It is again, will bring us together and I have a full support uh, for this legislation. Uh, thank you. Council President, I'd like to say some something yes, about this Mr. Baker. um one thing i'm gonna just put it out there i support this legislation first thing second of all this is an opportunity for both hands the community and the police force to come together and do something great and in this legislation it makes those who serve on this board learn what the police department does so they can get a better feel of what a police the police have to do on a daily basis. This is it's not easy being somebody that has to enforce the law. Just like it's not easy being a ref on a football field. You're always going to have somebody that's going to argue with you over the rules. But this gives a great opportunity, a learning opportunity. Let me point that learning opportunity between the two departments. And I think we're on the right step to amend something that's deeply um, has deeply hurt this country as a whole when it comes to race relations and the and the trusting of the police force. I think our police force is doing an excellent job here in Reynoldsburg. And when I, at the end of every council meeting, when I said when I say thank you to the police force, it's not just to say it just to say it. I'm saying it because the proof is out there. And so, and I have also I have the utmost respect for Chief Baker, not just because he has the same last name, name as mine, but he's doing an awesome job with our police force. And it is being recognized. So with this, this is just a step closer to bridging a gap that's long been um, divided. And so I full heartedly support this legislation. And like everybody said, I'm going to reiterate it too. Like Councilman Savati said at the last council meeting, I hope this review board has nothing to do. So that means we're doing a good job. So but that's all I got to say. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from Council? So do we need to read the ordinance again and then have a vote on this separately, Molly? We'll need to have a vote. I don't think I need to, attorney Shook, unless you think so. I don't think we need to read it again. I think you just need to ask for a motion to approve it and a second and then do a roll call. Is that correct, attorney Shook? Thank you. 
May I have a motion to approve item 13B on the consent agenda for a third reading and approval? Uh, Councilwoman Strickland, do I have a second? Second. Councilwoman Lawson Rowe, would the clerk please read, please call the roll. Councilmember Silvati? Aye. Councilmember Pecoro? Aye. Councilmember Lawson Rowe? Aye. Councilmember Kotner? Nay. Councilmember Baker? Oh, aye. Councilmember Bryant? Aye. And Councilmember Strickland? Aye. Madam President, the vote was 6 1. Ordinance 13B is approved with six affirmative votes and one negative vote. We will move on to item 14, other council matters. Does anyone on council have any other further items that they would like to discuss this evening? Uh, Madam President, uh, may I just offer a, a big shout out and a word of thanks to our teachers and our work from home parents that are um, juggling um, our young people that are home learning virtually. So first of all, the shout out to the parents, I mean, I'm sorry, to the teachers that are um, on the front lines, if you will, in the classroom, face to face with their students in desk. Um, second of all, um, shout out to those wonderful teachers that are actually teaching and, and meeting with our students in um, environments such as this, in boxes. And then three, a super shout out to the work from home parents that are in environments such as this in boxes and they have their students positioned around their home learning. I've had an opportunity to um, participate in second grade virtually the past couple of weeks. And so I have a new respect. And so I just want to hats off to the teachers. Thank you. Thank you. And you forgot to add in the grandparents and the aunts and uncles and everyone else that's having to help in this process. Um, and it just doesn't, it's just not for the high school or elementary or middle school um, a shout out for those um, parents who have students in college who are learning this process as well. Um, it's been a learning process for us all, I believe, and trying to learn how to uh, handle Zoom and how to deal with Facebook Live and all of the different types of technology that we've all had to learn and um, adjust to. And with that also, um, hopefully soon we'll be able to meet in council chambers we have our equipment in and it's being tested and our uh, clerk Molly is testing it and making sure that we're going to be able to meet and hopefully the next council meeting, um, we do plan to meet in person. So hopefully once we get all that technology um, under our belt, um, we'll be able to meet um, at our next meeting, October 26. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to add this evening? Uh, Madam President. Yes, Council uh, Member Baker. Two things. One is uh, go Raiders. They got to play off another playoff game. Let's um, bring this one home, too. Uh, two, I like to continue my tradition of thanking the police department, the firefighters, our men and women in the service, and those who are serving in the retail industry and a lot logistic industry for help keeping uh, things going in this COVID uh, time. And just like everybody, I, I can't wait to see the light at the end of the tunnel where this is over, but I like to say thank you to those and the teachers too. So that's a shout out to all the teachers who are working hard uh, during this pandemic to make sure that our young people are getting a quality education. And that's a special shout out to my wife as well. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from council? I'd like to thank everyone for participating this evening in this virtual meeting. Council's next meeting is scheduled for Monday, October the 26th at 6.30 p.m. We will be in person in Reynoldsburg City Council Chambers. As there's no further business, this meeting is adjourned and the time is 8.27. Have a great evening and thank you. Thank you. Good evening.
Stay safe. Good night.